Recently, I purchased a Super Ludwig mahogany drum. It's from the 1920s. And when I was doing research about it, I couldn't find anything on online uh, that was in the form of a video. There was only one video, I think, of someone playing one and just not a lot of information about it. So I thought I'd do one. This is the drum. And I'm really happy about getting this because it's taken me 10 years to track one of these down. I've been waiting for it on eBay, I've been waiting for it online, I've been waiting everywhere for it for someone to just sell one. And it took 10 years and I finally have one. I'm really excited about it. It's a really unique drum. There aren't a lot of things like it now um, unless you, you know, get the vintage uh, style of drum. Uh, so I'm gonna go through a little bit of the history about it and then I'm gonna go through the different parts of the drum just to explain uh, you know what it is, how it works, and just give the information that I thought was helpful to me when I was looking for one of these drums and finding out more about it. So the Super Ludwig is made by Ludwig and Ludwig Drum Company. Uh, this was the first uh, establishment of the Ludwig Drum Company. The Super Ludwig began production in 1924. That's when they started selling it uh, commercially, and that's when they were released. They were available in different types of woods and metal, and were a very unique drum for the time because it was the first time that a snare mechanism like this drum had ever you know, come into existence. So in 1928, they added the snare guard, which on this drum I actually added myself. I found a reproduction of the snare guard that they used to make. Uh, it's still made out of nickel, which is the same type of metal that they used back then and that matches the rims of this drum. And uh, it's just a clamp that goes on the outside of the lugs and it protects the snares from getting moved or damaged or you know anything like that. In 1930, they came out with the Ludwig Super Sensitive Drum, which added another set of snares to the top head. So not only did you have the clutch uh, that turned the snares on and off in the bottom, but you also had uh, a, a separate clutch essentially on the top head. So you would turn it on and there would be a little uh, you know, row of snares that would also touch the top head, which made it a really tight sound. You didn't get a lot of that drum, uh, you know, the ringing that you get from when you hit a drum sound. This particular drum was made between uh, 1924 and 1926. The reason I know that is because on the badge, it just says Chicago underneath the, uh, the company name. And in uh, 1927, they added Chicago USA. Uh, to the badge, so that's how you you know you can date these, and and I know that I have you know one of the original uh, between 1924 and 1926 models. So it has a really interesting strainer because not only uh, does it have a lot of just mechanics to it, but it doesn't really go up and down like normal strainers do now. It just has a really interesting look to it, and uh, it's really cool. Something that's really cool about it is that. Uh, all the snares are connected to both ends of the strainer um, and they're individually threaded. So you can have individual control through these little tiny screws over the tension of every individual strand of gut or wire, whatever you decide to put on it. That's the control that you have, which is really nice. And then you also have control over the tension of the entire strainer as a whole. So once you get the, the evenness of whatever you want, then you tighten all the individual screws and then you can get even more particular with the sound that you want and uh, just the feel of the drum. The throw off is really cool because um, it's not like normal throw offs where it just has a down and an up or up and down or whatever it is. Uh, the, the little lever, actually, you can unscrew it and then you can go uh, to the left, to the right, or to the center and actually put it in place by, you know, screwing it back in, um, back into place so it just stays there, which is really nice because uh, depending on how you want to throw it off with your thumb, with your fingers, you know, depending on all that, it really is nice having the accessibility to uh, change to whatever situation you're in. The main reason why this drum is so great and unique is because the throw off works in a sense that when you when you throw off the snares both of the snare sides go down at the exact same time unlike current drums where when you throw it off it just hangs from this side and then it dangles over across it's evenly going up and down so when you turn it on it goes up and then down it touches the drum as well as when you turn it off what makes this happen is there's a rod inside the drum uh, and that is connecting both sides of the strainer. So when you turn the snares on, 
it rotates uh, to turn both sides evenly and then same thing when you turn it off. So it just rotates back and forth, allowing even tension across uh, all the snares. Something that's really interesting about that is the snares are in constant tension, so there's never any slack. So the snares are always the same no matter what, whether they're touching the head or not, it's just that's where they are and you know, they have the, uh, the freeness to vibrate uh, at the rate that they want, not you know, unevenly throughout the drum. So I took it out to this uh, musician percussionist in Los Angeles and he really you know, fixed up the drum for me. I just gave him the drum, some new heads, the snare guards, and he put it all together. Uh, he really knows how these drums work and he asked me what combination I would want. So I decided to go six wire and four gut and it just gives a real dryness which is nice um, for up close uh, recording and even for a live setting because you have that the punch from the gut which is nice. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to end it by giving a little clip of me playing. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my page. I'm hoping to post some new videos of, uh, of me playing some musicals. Maybe I'll do some more product reviews or just, you know, drum reviews, things like that. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.